Today, I'm going to cook for you a cream cake, which, when you go to the Asian restaurants today, they have these cream cakes. And so that's what I'm going to make for you. At the bottom of the tray is going to be a cake, and at the top is going to be a chocolate cream pie. We're going to some new Asian restaurants, the Asians that came to America after the 60s. So, I hope you enjoy this video. Yuck! A dish enjoyed by me, my mother, and my community over the years. But where does it come from? In some areas of America, it's called noodle soup. But this simple dish has a complicated background. Look at the fishies following me. <laughs> Look at the little fishies, they're following me. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go. Come on, fishies. Come on, fishies. Watch the fish follow me. <laughs> Oh Lord, these fish love people. Right here, Madam Pachi. Give me something to eat for dinner. After the death of the disciples, the earth was divided. Countries that once knew each other, after generations of being separated, became unknown to each other. Europe ruled in technology and began to explore the nations. Out of one nation came an exploring businessman named Marco Polo. One of the regions that his family explored was Asia. He brought back with him a noodle made of flour and water. It was called Yak. This was in 1200 AD. Italy created a noodle called spaghetti from the Asian noodle. I'm making this by the recipe on the package. So I'm using Nestle chocolate. never changed, nor did their food. In the 1800s, the gold rush in America started, and Europe was enslaving the Asians. America joined in and began to bring the Asians into American ports in California on boats and cages. The first Asians were not considered immigrants, they were considered slaves. They proceeded to treat them as slaves. 1850, a case, People versus Hall. People vs. Hall. Hall was a white American, Caucasian, that had murdered a man named Lin Sling, a Chinese man. Three Chinese was going to testify against Hall. But the court concluded that it was unconstitutional for an Asian to testify against a white citizen. They did not have rights, they therefore were slaves. They soon became part of the gold rush. They were used as mine laborers and as railroad laborers. The Asian Americans built the railroad from the west, while African Americans built the railroad from the north and south. They met somewhere in the Midwest. The European 
Americans killed the African Americans and replaced them with the Asians. The United Apostolic Churches, the churches from Azulu Street, soon began to buy the freedom of the Asians to create churches in America and in Asia and all over the world. Many did convert to become Christians, but they were treated the same as African Americans. From the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. The railroad, the railroad brought the Asians to New News. By the 1900s, in a dish called yak or noodle soup. It was the same dish Marco Polo brought to Italy. They were the Asians with the railroad and the Native Americans. Asian Americans kept their names, clothing, and food. Their style of cooking. Some, some parts of the country built cities for them. Other parts of the country, they had to live where the African Americans lived in their neighborhood because the Caucasians did not allow any ethnic group to live in their neighborhood. In the 1940s, war broke out between Japan and America. All Asians were considered a threat, rounded up, and placed in camps, which the African Americans call slave camps. Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, our west coast became a potential combat zone. Living in that zone were more than 100,000 persons of Japanese ancestry, two-thirds of them American citizens, one-third aliens. We knew that some among them were potentially dangerous. Most were loyal. But no one knew what would happen among this concentrated population if Japanese forces should try to invade our shores. Military authorities therefore determined that all of them, citizens and aliens alike, would have to move. This picture tells how the mass migration was accomplished. Neither the Army nor the War Relocation Authority relished the idea of taking men, women, and children from their homes, their shops, and their farms. So the military and civilian agencies alike determined to do the job as a democracy should, with real consideration for the people involved. First attention was given to the problems of sabotage and espionage. Now, here at San Francisco, for example,
convoys were being made up within sight of possible Axis agents. There were more Japanese in Los Angeles than in any other area. In nearby San Pedro, houses and hotels, occupied almost exclusively by Japanese, were within a stone throw of a naval air base, shipyards, oil wells. Japanese fishermen had every opportunity to watch the movement of our ships. Japanese farmers were living close to vital aircraft plants. So as a first step, all Japanese were required to move from critical areas such as these. But of course, this limited evacuation was a solution to only part of the problem. The larger problem, the uncertainty of what would happen among these people in case of a Japanese invasion, still remained. That is why the commanding general of the Western Defense Command determined that all Japanese within the coastal area should move inland. Immediately, the army began mapping evacuation areas and for a time encouraged the Japanese to leave voluntarily. The trouble for the voluntary evacuees soon threatened in their new locations. So the program was quickly put on a planned and protected basis. Thereafter, the American citizen Japanese and Japanese aliens made their plans in accordance with army orders. Notices were posted. All persons of Japanese descent were required to register. They gathered in their own churches and schools and the Japanese themselves cheerfully handled the enormous paperwork involved in the migration. Civilian physicians made preliminary medical examinations. Government agencies helped in a hundred ways. They helped the evacuees find tenants for their farms. They helped businessmen lease, sell, or store their property. Now, this aid was financed by the government, but quick disposal of property often involved financial sacrifice for the evacuees. Now the actual migration got underway. The army provided fleets of vans to transport household belongings and buses to move the people to assembly centers. The evacuees cooperated wholeheartedly. The many loyal among them felt that this was a sacrifice they could make in behalf of America's war effort. In small towns as well as large, up and down the coast, the moving continued. Behind them, they left shops and homes they had occupied for many years. Their fishing fleets were impounded and left under guard. Now they were taken to racetracks and fairgrounds where the army almost overnight had built assembly centers. They lived here, until new pioneer communities could be completed on federally owned lands in the interior. Santa Anita Racetrack, for example, suddenly became a community of about 17,000 persons. The army provided housing and plenty of healthful, nourishing food for all. The residents of the new community set about developing a way of life as nearly normal as possible. They held church services, Protestant, Catholic and Buddhist. They issued their own newspaper, organized nursery schools, and some made camouflage nets for the United States Army. Meanwhile, in Arizona, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, and elsewhere, quarters were being built where they would have an opportunity to work and more space in which to live. When word came that these new homes were ready, the final movement began. At each relocation center, evacuees were met by an advanced contingent of Japanese who had arrived some days earlier and who now acted as guides. Naturally, the newcomers looked about with some curiosity. They were in a new area, on land that was raw, untamed, but full of opportunity. Here they would build schools, educate their children, reclaim the desert. Their own physicians took precautions to guard against epidemics. 
They opened advanced Americanization classes for college students, who in turn would instruct other groups. They made a rough beginning at self-government. For while the army would guard the outer limits of each area, community life and security within were largely up to the Japanese themselves. They immediately saw the need for developing civic leaders. At weekly community meetings, citations were given to the block leaders who had worked most diligently. Special emphasis was put on the health and care of these American children of Japanese descent. citizens and their grandparents who are aliens immediately wanted to go to work at Manzanar they built a lath house and began rooting guayuli cuttings the plants when mature will add to our rubber supply at Parker they undertook the irrigation of fertile desert lands meanwhile in areas away from the coast and under appropriate safeguards, many were permitted to enter private employment, particularly to work in sugar beet fields where labor was badly needed. Now, this brief picture is actually the prologue to a story that is yet to be told. The full story will begin to unfold when the raw lands of the desert turn green, when all adult hands are at productive work on public lands or in private employment. It will be fully told only when circumstances permit the loyal American citizens once again to enjoy the freedom we in this country cherish and when the disloyal, we hope, have left this country for good. In the meantime, we are setting a standard for the rest of the world in the treatment of people who may have loyalties to an enemy nation. We are protecting ourselves without violating the principles of Christian decency. And we won't change this fundamental decency no matter what our enemies do. But of course, we hope most earnestly that our example will influence the Axis powers in their treatment of Americans who fall into their hands. They therefore proceeded to take away all of their property, all of their land, and all of their rights. So the Asians lost everything. They therefore, asked, some of them were taking off the camps the African Americans and uh, racially mixed Americans. Americans, uh, and they went to get them and take them off the camp and bring them back to their property. Uh, the government did not come back and get them again nor did they um, persecute them for coming back. As far as I know, they didn't. But all of them were not taken off the property. All of them were, did not leave. All of them were not leaving. And after cool, I'm going to add a pudding to it. I'm going to add a ganache pudding. I'll put this on top of the brown. So what else I have to do is whip some cream. Wait a minute, let me stir this up a little bit more. Now this is all made with agave, right? But all you have to do is take a honey recipe. I use a sugar recipe, but if you're afraid of agave because it's a liquid, you just take pure honey recipes. And you take those honey recipes and you convert them into agave recipes because both of my liquids and agave and honey should work practically the same. So I'm going to put this up here like this and I'm going to make a whipped cream topping. Okay, that's stiff enough. That's stiff enough for me. I don't want butter. Okay, now, let me cut this off, that's my teeth. Now let me take this and 
just scoop it like this. Oh, you could do some decorative designs if you skill, honey. If you skill, you know, um, you know, have piping and stuff. If you know piping, man, you skill. You might not have went to school, but you know piping. <laughs> Go up there and show us what you can do. The only I can do that better than you. I, I know how to. I'm, I can make that better. Make it. <laughs> make it. Share it with us. Maybe you're gonna do something. I just like wow. <laughs> wow, man. Wow, I wanna do that. I'm gonna learn how to do that. Try that recipe that way. Maybe you can. And most people, if you get, if you skill that piping, you could pipe it up here. But I'm just making it like this. I'm not piping. I'm not piping anything. There it is. Wrap for the freezer. When I was younger, and it was uh, a sign on the window, on the Asian window, on the Asian restaurant window, it said Cantonese American cooking. And I thought that the food that they cooked came from America. And my mama was saying the food that they cooked, darling, comes from a part of China. It's called Cantonese.